Hi, I'm Troy. I'm Linda. We're Wines, Pines, and Canines. You know, Troy, I know these jackknife sofas are in so many rigs out there, but they are just not comfortable. Well, as far as I'm concerned, anything can be modified. And that's what today's video is going to be all about. But before we get to those modifications, Troy's going to give you a quick update on our boondocking. <laughs> I want to follow up to a video that Linda and I put together several weeks back. My task for this year is to do more boondocking and become more available to go off grid. To that, I have spent a lot of time researching common issues and common problems with being off grid like power, electricity, batteries, solar, all of these things. Um, in, as opposed to just hurling a lot of money at the situation like I always do, it seems, this time I'm going to go step by step. I want to show with you the cost benefit of a lot of the different common options available. Okay, step one for me is going to be to establish a baseline. I want to talk about what originally came from the dealer when we bought the camper. The original batteries, the installed solar such as it is, all of these things. But piece by piece, I want to start bringing other segments in to the evaluation to show you what am I getting for my money. I can buy solar, I can buy batteries, but we're going to talk about what batteries, what solar, how much do they cost, how it benefits you, how it benefited me. So the first couple months this year it's pretty cold. I'm doing a lot of my evaluation, a lot of my research now. As soon as it begins to warm up, Linda and I are definitely going to hitch onto the trailer and we're going to head right out to the North Carolina mountains like we do every year. And we're, This time we're going to use harvest hosts. We're going to go off grid. And with that, I want to see how my decisions came into practicality, what actually worked and what I got the most benefit from. So if, as we move on through the spring into the summer, if you want to follow along with what we have going on, please like and subscribe. It'll be a lot of fun. So back to this jackknife sofa. If we dislike it so much, why don't we just get rid of it? Well, this is the reason why. This is the hindrance. So. This is actually the bottom of our slide. So the only thing that can really go in here is a jackknife sofa. So we started thinking, okay, what are our options? Now there are places online, um, I believe Rec Pro is one, um, that they do sell replacement jackknife sofas. But they're expensive. You're going to pay hundreds, if not up to $1,000, depending on what you want. Um, secondly, you know, they're not going to match in color. And third, there's no guarantee that it was going to be any better than just the one that we had. I can't go, I can't test it, I can't try it out. So that's why we're going to modify this instead of replacing it. Now, we already had this couch apart, so before we get to those modifications, let me show you a little bit of what's under here. So when you take this front panel off, you have um, the storage underneath, but there's really only about eight inches. Now in a camper, every little bit helps. So this is why we did a quick modification to be able to access under here. Um, the manufacturer installs these really tragic L brackets to the back of this balance that basically screw this balance to the top of this deck. It works, I guess. If the trailer never moved and it never got used, it would work. So we took it out. I took it took this piece off and I'll do it very slowly so you can see what I've done. We took a little piece of uh, quarter inch plywood, uh, pine plywood, ripped it down, fastened it to the back of the balance, then I used residential box hinges like this, screw these hinges through my plywood that I added right into this OSB sheathing that makes up the balance. It gives me a little bit more thicker product and a little bit be better bite on these screws. So now Instead of having to wonder what's behind here, I can quite literally hinge it and I can get right to it. So once we figured out that we could not get rid of this sofa, we had to figure out what five things were bothering us that we could fix. So these are the five items that we modified. Number one, the fact that this sofa really kind of pitched you forward. Now I did talk about this in our longer review video and we're going to go into a little bit more detail in this video. But we always felt like we were leaning forward when we were sitting on this sofa. Second of all was we had to be able to put our feet up at night and to be able to watch some TV. 
third underneath this it just after a while you start to feel these springs and I needed to solve that fourth there's no armrests in here so after a while you just don't have any place to rest your arm like you do on a sofa at home and the last thing was the built-in cup holders now they do fine for a can or a small bottle but I had nowhere to put a coffee cup and to that I also had nowhere to put a snack tray so if we're watching a movie at night we had to put it here on the middle sofa and hope that it somehow didn't get knocked over so we solved that as well all right so this couch relatively easy to remove at uh, four points two in the front two in the back you've got your basic lag screw with a 10 millimeter um, six point socket takes it right out these four legs hold the frame down to this deck you see right here. It takes just a few minutes to pull this whole couch out. It weighs very little. They really need two people. Um, it's not very heavy, but it's difficult to guide around this tight camper. So you need one person looking and one person moving. Okay, so the couch is removed, and now we're going to um, show you how we tilted it back a little bit. Um, we are putting these boards down here, and then we cut these. I think they were what? Sorry, four inches wide by uh, 20 inches long. Yeah, approximately. And then they're um, three quarters thick. So we have the um, washer set up here, and this is how we're going to make that black bar of the couch tilt back. And we're going to show you here in a second, but we put the washers under that bar, and then we did get some new bolts. Um, they're a little bit longer, so they would go through the additional three quarters of wood that we're putting under them. So we have already done the other side, but we're about to put the bolts back in this. So we have pre-drilled a hole, um, or we're going to pre-drill a hole, three inches back uh, from the edge of this balance. Then once we do, we put the washers in and put the new bolt down through here. Then we're going to secure the back, and we should be good to go. All right, so the couch is put back together right back on the slide like we had it before. We had to make a little change. We had to raise it up to accommodate our modification that we made right here. But the, a nice advantage to what we've done is I'm a taller guy, just a touch about six feet. Just raising the couch up a little bit makes it a lot more comfortable, even if it was for no other reason. So by putting the washers and elevating these bars underneath a little bit, it helped um, tilt the couch back. Um, but there was one thing still in the way, and that's the fact that these cushions were so much uh, stuffing in them that it still pitched you forward. Um, so what I did was, there's actually a zipper under here. You pull out the insert. Now these are split, um, so I had to cut a hole on each side. And I pulled down about a third of the stuffing, really, um, out of these. And I'm going to show you in a minute what I actually used that stuffing for. Um, but we did it on this one and this one which are the two that Troy and I sit in and it really does help with being able to then sit back okay so now that we have this couch tilting backwards and it's a little bit higher uh, the next modification was to get our feet up that's where the ottomans come in now if you watched our longer review video we went into some detail on um, these Troy and I did make them so I'm going to quickly go over those um, and the thing is that we really like is they're just a nice height. Um, they kind of match that, you know, theater seating where your feet are as high as your seat. Um, before we had this green one. Now this is less expensive on Amazon. Um, and I'm going to show you a quick hack that just about anybody can do. But you can see it's even with this up an inch and tilted back a little bit. Before, um, they just aren't high enough and you find yourself kind of reaching forward because your feet are going forward. Okay, so quickly, these footstools, um, we made them from some scrap half inch plywood that we had laying around, and they are approximately uh, 15 inches by 16 inches, and then the wood box is approximately, again, about 15 inches high. We then made a uh, kind of a two-part top. Um, they come over with a ledge, so they sit over, then this piece here, we can use, um, if we set the both of them, because we do have two, here in front, we can use them to eat at. Um, we can also just pick them up, put them on our laps to eat at. And then the cushion was just a quick cushion cover off of Amazon. I put some foam in it, wrapped it around, 
They go in here. That's the footstool. On the bottom, I bought four inch hairpin legs. Um, that's just to go ahead and get it up and keep some of the weight down. So these are fairly heavy. And if you don't have the tools to kind of make a custom box, a quicker and easier way is one of these. Now this is off of Amazon again. They run anywhere from 25 on up to 50, 60 dollars. You can get them in different sizes, but the most common is this one, which is, I believe, 15 by 15 by 15. Yes. So they do collapse down, but the problem is, again, they're too low. So this is what I was going to do before we built these. If you go to Home Depot and just get a piece of plywood and ask them to cut a piece that would go inside here, put that in the bottom. You can buy hairpin legs or furniture legs. Put them on the bottom at four inches, screwing them then into the plywood. You're going to raise this up four inches. You're going to get the same thing that I have here, a whole lot easier, and you're probably going to pay um, about $50, $60 a footstool. Okay, modification number three. You know how I was saying that you sit on this couch for a while and those springs, you really start to feel them. Well, I'm gonna put some two inch foam under these seats. Now you can find a piece that's about six feet long, two feet wide on Amazon for about $35. We were lucky enough to have a neighbor that was trying to get rid of some. Um, I've cut it into 24 by 20 inch pieces to go under our two seats. Not going to put it in the middle because there's a reason um, that's our fifth modification in just a minute. Okay, so here it is under the couch and let's see how much more comfortable it is. Okay, now this modification we haven't tested out yet, but already it just feels a little bit firmer than what it was before. Not sure how it's going to um, hold up and if it doesn't work, we'll let you know in a later video. But at the moment, definitely does feel like a little bit more foam under your seat. Okay, so if you notice the cushions on top of the ottomans actually match these little cushions. And I believe these are like a 12 by 20, also uh, um, ordered off of Amazon. Um, these were for the two cushion covers, less than $20. And this is kind of what I used the stuffing from the cushions in. Now I also had some extra just random stuffing at the house and so kind of made these really full. What these are for, is I plan on getting a little uh, Velcro strip here, a Velcro strip here, and then they will sit kind of permanently. And then when I'm sitting back, now I have some place to put my arm. Okay, major modifications are finally done. Um, but we've down to one of the most important parts, and that is where do I put my coffee? Um, thank you to Amazon. Uh, I bought two of these for about $10. I wrapped some electrical tape along the bottom just so they would fit a bit more snug. Stick them in, coffee cup in, problem solved. But where do I put my food? Okay, so I have my coffee, but I don't have anywhere to put a snack. This is the fifth modification that we've been talking about, and this is the reason why we raised up the couch to pull out snack tray. Here's the problem. We went through all this and we used 18 inch drawer glides thinking that was going to be enough. Well, I can put a couple bowls on here with no problem, but we'd like it to come out a little bit further. So we're probably going to take those 18 inch drawer glides that we'll show you in a minute and we're going to replace them with 20 or 22 inch just so it comes out a little bit further. Um, there's plenty of room behind here to do that. Um, and we really like this though. It does slide back and forth and we painted it to match the couch so you really can't see it. Okay, so this is how we did our um, tray table. Now these are the parts we used and then I'm going to show um, how Troy put it all together. These are center line, center mount slides. They're 18 inches long. I got them off of Amazon um, a number of years ago, but they are still available, I believe. They're about $20 a piece. We're going to use two, but you might be able to get away with one. Now, underneath these slides, because we don't want it to hit the edge of this balance, we've put this uh, quarter inch MDF. Um, you could use plywood or anything that was about a quarter inch. 
then it is going to allow these glides to kind of um, come out over this without actually hitting the edge of that. And then the table that we used is we had a scrap piece of plywood laying around and this is half inch plywood. It's about 20 inches um, by 16 inches. You could, uh, if you don't have the ability to cut it yourself, you could take it to um, Home Depot and ask them to cut uh, a piece of plywood from their store and I believe they do that for free. Then we just kind of sanded and painted. Now we did install a little edging on it. Um, so if you have the ability, you can do that, but it, it's really not needed. We just did that to cover up the edges. Um, so right now, Troy's going to go ahead and screw this all together. First up is going to be install the guides on the back of this tray table. Okay, so we cut these strips at about 18 inches, and we're setting them back almost uh, 2 inches. I think an inch and 3 quarters from the front, and that will allow us to still use the hinge. Yeah, otherwise it rubs on the face of it. Yeah, and the ones in the front, these screws here, you want to make sure not to uh, tighten them up too much because you don't want to draw the wood down to them where the glide hits this. Yeah. Okay, so everything is installed, and this thing just clears Barely. the top of that balance. Okay, we are done with our modifications for the day, uh, so we're going to run through them real quick for you. Uh, modification number one was lifting this couch up an inch, tilting it back, and removing some of the stuffing out of the back. That whole thing cost us uh, about 5 or $10, and what do you think about those changes? Well, they're obvious to me. I mean, getting the uh, couch to sit a little higher makes it feel more like a residential couch and not so much like a slide couch. Yeah, we were actually kind of shocked at that. We didn't realize how much uh, that little bit of um, elevation movement up. change yeah, yeah exactly would have made a difference but yeah, um and taking the cushion out for me because i'm taller it, it helps me to sit back a little bit further uh -huh. I, even though you took some of the stuffing out i don't feel any change in the quality of the comfort no and i don't think you you can't tell when you look I, at the couch that there's really a lot of stuff i would out say they were overstuffed to be uh, definitely with. definitely yeah. Um, so modification number two were these footstools. Now whether you go with a custom footstool or you go with the one like I showed you off of Amazon and just raise it up the four inches, the great thing about those are they just provide extra storage, which in a camper, that's what you need. Absolutely. Um, so modification number three was the foam under the cushions. And um, like I said, you know, you can tell, I think a little bit that they're a little bit firmer. Yeah, it's a little bit more, yeah tufted I not tufted but um just a little bit more dense yeah 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 that, in time, that's a good I, word in, in time I think it's probably going to wear itself down to back to a comfort level but it's just a little bit more again of a residential feel yeah so um you know and it might even be something where in the future if we find two those two the two inch foam isn't enough maybe we um, go ahead and get a three inch piece but for now I think that works um, number four were these just pillows, and as you can see, they do match the footstool. Um, and it's just, it's going to be nice at night, especially if we're here surfing on an iPad or anything, to have a place to um, put your arm. Now, didn't you recover the stuffing out of the back cushions? Yes, the back cushions are in here. So. Yeah, and you were able to get the material that really matches and looks great. Yeah, it's it's almost a match for these couches, which is um, yeah, very, so you can see it. <laughs> very strange. Um, these were just a random buy off of Amazon, and we found that they actually match really well. Um, so then the final one, number five, were the cup holders, so we can each have some coffee and our little snack plate. Um, so it's just, we could put it here, but I'm afraid we'd knock it over. And like I said, we're probably going to change all those guides so they come out a little bit further. Right. But for now, I think they work. Well, it's better than what it was, and we're going to change up because we're always changing up. Um, the only guarantee is that we are going to modify. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So, um, but so we if have a 20 inch guide under here. We'll bring it out. And if we have to, we'll bring a, we'll build a bigger tray. Yeah. We have plenty of room for both options. So that pretty much wraps up the modifications that we did for this couch. Um, we hope that some of these tips will help you guys. Um, and we have some other modifications planned for this camper. Um, we have the boondocking that you Absolutely. spoke of earlier. Yep. That's coming. Um, 
So if you would like to see more, please like and subscribe. And remember, Desi wants you to hit that notification bell.